Welcome to another Tech Help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I'm your instructor, Richard Rost. In today's video, I'm going to teach you how to set up an auto save in your forms so that your data saves at timed intervals in Microsoft Access. Word and Excel, they all have got auto save features, right? If you're working on a Word document or an Excel spreadsheet, it, it saves, right? Why doesn't Access have that? So that's what we're going to build in today's video. Today's question comes from Declan in San Francisco, California, one of my Platinum members. Declan says, I run a call center and have a problem where my employees will get up and walk away from the computer in the middle of entering a record without saving it. They'll go on a smoke break or even out to lunch or sometimes even go home before saving their work. And of course, if that caller calls back and someone else goes to open the record, they don't see the most up-to-date changes. Is there any way to have the database automatically save changes every minute or two in case this happens? Yes, of course, Declan, we can do this using something called a timer event. Now, I also cover timer events in this video on how to make a reminder pop up so that every few minutes or so, your form will check to see if a certain event happens and it'll pop up a message. You can use the same thing to save the record. But you don't always want to save the record. You don't always want this timer event running. You want to check to see if the user's in the middle of editing it first. So how do we do that? Well, to do that, we're going to check to see if the record is dirty first. Ooh, it's dirty, right? <laughs> dirty means that the user's in the middle of editing it. You get that little pencil here. All right, so in the timer event, we're going to check to see if the record's dirty. And if so, we're going to save it. And I'll show you how in just a second. If you haven't watched either of these videos, though, the dirty video, or the timer event video, go watch those first and then come on back. Now this is a developer video, which means we're gonna be using a little bit of VBA. So if you have not yet watched my intro to VBA class, go watch this, it's about 20 minutes long. It teaches you everything you need to know to get started. Okay, here I am in my Tech Help free template. This is a free database. You can get a copy off my website if you want to. And in here, I've got a customer form. Let's pretend this is the form that our call center people are using on a regular basis and they come in here and they make some changes and they make another change down here. They type in some notes, whatever, and they leave for the day. And here the database is sitting. It's dirty, right? You got that pencil there. That means that this record, it, it, it's here on the form, but the data has not yet been committed to the table. So if someone else goes to look up this customer, they'll see the old data because this data hasn't been saved yet. So what you want is an event that will run every few minutes, not too often, you don't want to do this too often because you might annoy the user, right? Because if this runs like every second or every five or 10 seconds, then they might be in the middle of typing and poof, the record saves. So that could be annoying. So I would set it to something maybe like five minutes or whatever you feel is appropriate for your business or your use. But for the purposes of class, just for the, just for this video, I'm going to set it to five seconds so we can see that it's working. Okay. So how do we do that? Well, first let's go into design view. And let's open up the forms properties and find events. And we're going to scroll down here until we find the timer interval. All right. This is the number of milliseconds, not seconds, but milliseconds before the event fires off. I'm going to put 5,000 in here. That's five seconds. If you want two minutes, it'd be 60 seconds times two times a thousand or 120,000. All right. You can put a pretty big number in here, but I would make this for a real case scenario. I'd make this at least a couple of minutes. Every time the event runs, it might steal focus too. Okay. So what are we going to put in the on timer event? Well, let's go in here, dot, dot, dot. That'll bring up our code builder. All right. Here I am in the forms timer event. Now, the first thing I want to do is I want to check to see if the user is actively editing this record, because if they're not editing it, we don't have to do anything. Okay. So I'm going to say if me dot dirty, then we're going to do some stuff. If it's not dirty, just nothing will happen. All right, we don't want to run this event if the record isn't dirty, if the record isn't being edited. Okay, now, all you really have to do is set the dirty property to false, and that will save the record. Now, it's not going to refresh things. It won't do any recalculations on the form. So you could use a me.refresh here if you wanted to. All right, that'll refresh any calculations and stuff like that. Um, but I don't want to do that. I'm going to do a me dot dirty equals false. All that literally will do is save the record. Okay. And you'll, the pencil will go away 
and you'll see that it turns into a little uh, a little arrow, right? And I'll put a beep in here too, just so we know that it's working. You'll, you you don't want the beep in your in your final version. I mean, you, you could leave it if you wanted to. All right, so I'm gonna save it. I'm gonna close this form and then open it back up again. Now, the record's not dirty, so I'm gonna sit here and wait, right? Two, three, four, five. Okay, nothing's happening. I'm not hearing any beeps, that's good. Let me edit the record. I'll just come in here and put in some characters. It's it's now a pencil. I'll wait. And there it goes. See, it saved it. I heard my beep and my little pencil went away. See, right there. So every five seconds, that guy's going to run. Now, want to give the user a visual indication of what's happening? Just set that caption of the form property up there. Okay, now be careful. This happens a lot. I get this email all the time. In fact, I just saw this in the forum the other day. If this form is open over here, see how I just switched over to my VBA editor, right? This event is still running. If I come in here and start typing, see, look, see what just happened? See, I didn't do anything. The event ran and it refreshed this. And now it's saying subword function not defined because it's trying to run this. See, so keep in mind, now I had to stop that. And when you stop this, it kills that timer event. Okay, but if you get the VBA editor open and a form is running, People don't understand why this, you know, your text goes red or you get error messages because this because this thing's still running in the background. You got to close it. All right. Now you can come over here and make changes without worrying about that. But that's a common question. I get that all the time. All right. Back to that caption. Put it before the me dot dirty, though, because for some reason, setting the caption property also makes the record dirty. So it'll look like nothing happened. So me dot caption equals right auto saved. And now it will put the current date and time in there. So the user knows what's happening right? Save it. Come back over here. Close that. Open it up again. I'll come back in here and fix this. And I'm going to walk away. Oh, look at that. It saved my work for me automatically. The record got committed. The user got notified and everybody is happy. Right? Right. <laughs> now, there's only one thing you really got to watch out for. And that's if you have a business where your people are typing in novels into long text fields if they're typing lots and lots and lots of stuff in because if i'm in here typing away typing away type oh see what happened see what happened right there that event's going to run they might be in the middle of typing now they're not going to lose anything okay the data will be saved but it's going to be it's going to be annoying it's going to be irritating because it's going to save it and it might move their cursor back up to the top so how do you fix that well, that, my friends, is what we're going to cover in the extended cut for the members. I'm going to show you how to disable that autosave if the user is still actively editing the record, right? They're still typing and they're still clicking on stuff. I'll show you how to temporarily disable that autosave. But if they do walk away, then it kicks back in. A little bit it involves a little bit more coding. Extended cuts are for my silver members and up. You get access to all of my extended cut videos, not just this one, all of them. So it's well worth your membership. And if you like learning with me, if you like all this developer VBA programming stuff, I got tons of developer classes on my website. Come check those out too. I'll put links down below. But that folks is going to be your tech help video for today. I hope you learned something. Live long and prosper. I'll see you next time. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up and post any comments you may have below. I do try to read and answer all of them as soon as I can. Make sure you subscribe to my channel, which is completely free. Click the bell icon and select all to receive notifications when new videos are posted. Want to learn more? Click the show more link below the video to find additional resources and links. YouTube does a pretty good job of hiding it. It's right down there. See this part of the description here, right? The name, the videos up here. There's a little show more down there right down the bottom kind of hard to find. But once you click on that, you'll see a list of other videos, additional information related to the current topic, free lessons, and lots more. And YouTube no longer sends out email notifications when new videos are posted like they used to do. But if you'd like to get an email every time I post a new video, click on the link to join my mailing list. And you can pick how frequently to get emails from me, either as they happen daily, weekly, or monthly. Now, if you'd like to become a paid member of my channel and receive all kinds of awesome perks, click on the join button. You'll see a list of all the different membership levels that are available, each with its own special perks, including my extended cut videos, access to my code vault, lots of VBA source code in there, template downloads, and lots more. 
I'll talk more about these perks at the end of the video. Even if you don't want to commit to becoming a paid member and you'd like to help support my work, please feel free to click on the tip jar link. Your patronage is greatly appreciated and will help keep these free videos coming. I got some puppies to feed. But don't worry, no matter what, these free tech help videos are going to keep coming. As long as you keep watching them, I'll keep making more and they'll always be free. Now, if you really want to learn Access and you haven't tried my free Access Level 1 course, check it out now. It covers all the basics of Microsoft Access, including building forms, queries, reports, and more. It's over four hours long. You can find it on my website or on my YouTube channel. I'll put a link down below you can click on. And did I mention it's completely free? The whole thing, free, four hours. Go watch it. And okay, okay, a lot of you have told me that you don't have time to sit through a four hour course. So I do now have a quicker Microsoft Access for Beginners video that covers all the basics faster in about 30 minutes. And no, I didn't just put the video on fast forward. <laughs> but I'll put a link to this down below as well. Now, if you like level one, level two is just a dollar. That's it, one dollar. And that's another whole like 90 minute course. Level two is also free for paid members of any level, including supporters. So if you're a member, go watch level two, it's free. Okay, wanna get your question answered in a video just like this one? Visit my tech help page and send me your question there. Members get priority, of course. While I do try to read and respond to all of the comments posted below in the comments section, I only have time to go through them briefly a couple of times a month, and sometimes I get thousands of them. So send me your question here on the tech help page and you'll have a better chance of getting it answered. And while you're on my website, be sure to stop by my Access Forum. We've got lots of lively conversations about Microsoft Access and other topics. I have a fantastic group of moderators who help me answer questions. Shout out to Alex, Kevin, Scott, Adam, John, Dan, Juan, and everybody else who helps out on the site. I appreciate everything you do. I couldn't do it without you. Be sure to follow my blog, find me on Twitter, and of course, on YouTube. Yeah, I'm on Facebook too, but I don't like Facebook. Don't get me started. Now, let's talk more about those member perks if you do decide to join as a paid member. There are different levels, silver, gold, platinum, and diamond. Silver members and up get access to all of my extended cut tech help videos, one free beginner class every month, and some other perks. Gold members get all the previous perks, plus access to download the sample databases that I build in my tech help videos, plus access to my code vault where I keep tons of different functions that I use, the code that I build in most of the videos. You'll also get higher priority if you do submit any tech help questions. Now answers are never guaranteed, but you do go higher in the list for me to read them. And if I like your question, you got a good chance of it being answered. You'll also get one free expert level class each month after you've finished the beginner series. Platinum members get all the previous perks plus even higher priority for tech help questions. You get access to all of my full beginner level courses for every subject. And I cover lots of different subjects like Word, Excel, VBA, ASP, lots of different stuff, not just access. These are the full length courses found on my website. You get all the beginner ones. In addition, once you finish the expert classes, you get one free developer class per month. So lots of training. And finally, you can also become a diamond sponsor. You'll have your name or your company name listed on a sponsors page that will be shown on each video as long as you're a sponsor. You'll get a shout out in the video and a link to your website or product in the text below the video and on my website. So that's it. Once again, my name is Richard Rost. Thank you for watching this video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you learned something today. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you again soon.